This week, we're going to look at easy ways to put landmarks like major cities on your maps in Python. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, I wanted to show you how to put cities large cities, small cities, really any cities, on your map as landmarks. Often we're showing a large-scale setup of something, and it's helpful to put those landmarks on the maps for people that are maybe less familiar with the area than you are. Now, of course, the Python code to actually put a point on a map is not that complicated. It's a simple scatter point, and we've talked about them at great length. But what we haven't talked about is really where you can get that data. Now, sure, we know where there are sounding sites, but what about major cities? Well, you can get that data from the U.S. Census, but generally it's a shapefile, and there are Latin lawns in there, but it takes a little bit of digging. You can use simplemaps.com. The Simple Maps data set, there are several levels of it, but the basic data set, which is free, has just under 31,000 cities. Now, in the basic data set, you do have to agree that you're going to give attribution to your data source. It's under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 license. And they don't have all the fields or there's not guaranteed updates and so on. But really, we don't need all of that. We're just trying to put large cities on a map, and we don't really expect that their location is going to change. So you can download this data for free. There just will be a pop-up that says, do you agree that you will give us credit for the data source. And of course, that's something that we can easily do in our publications. Now let's go into Python and look at the data and write some code. So first, I'm going to import pandas as pd, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, import cartapy.crs as ccrs, and import cartapy.feature as C feature, all of our standard imports for making a map. Now reading in the data, it's amazing because pandas it makes it very easy. It's also a little anticlimactic. We're just going to use the read CSV function. And uscities.csv is the file. And let's look at the head of that. And it just reads in basically perfectly. We've got the city, the city ASCII name, state, state name, the FIPS for the county, the county, lat, lawn, and so on. Now really the only things we're going to care about out of here are latitude, longitude, maybe population if we want to do some filtering. We probably don't want to plot 31,000 cities on our map. And uh, the city name if we want to label it. So let's first filter down the 30,844 cities to just the large cities. So we'll call this DF large, where the population is greater than or equal to, and we can set some threshold here, let's say a quarter of a million people. And if we look at what the length is now we're down to 183 cities. So let's see what that looks like on a map. Our coordinate reference system for our map, if you know the map projection that I like, you know it's going to be a Lambert conformal, at least for these types of plots. Our central longitude will be minus 100. Central latitude, let's go with 45. We'll create our figure, it's plot.figure. We'll go with a 17 by 12 figure. We'll add a subplot, one row, one column, first plot. Projection is going to be our coordinate reference system that we defined. We'll set our extent to be conus.
We'll add our coastline. And we'll make it a little bit narrower of a line than one point. And an even narrower states outline. So we make sure our map works. That looks like a map of the US. Now we're ready to plot our cities on it. This is one of the few instances where I'm going to actually use iter rows on a data frame. There are a few different ways to do this, but I think you'll see why I like doing this in this particular instance. One, we don't have a huge data frame. We're dealing with a couple hundred things here. So I'm going to for underscore and city. Remember, underscore is just a throwaway variable name. It's kind of the standard name that we'll use. We don't really care about that part of the return. And remember, on iter rows, you get a tuple back where the first element of the tuple is the index of the element and then you get the actual content of the row. We don't care about the index. And let's do an axe.scatter, our city longitude, because that's our x coordinate, latitude for y, the transform, let's plot Korea, because these are lat lons. We'll leave them as now let's go stay with tab blue for all of them. And for the marker, we'll make it a star. Oh, and we need a CCRS there. Okay, so here are the cities of over a quarter million that are in this particular file. And you can see there are quite a few. This may be adequate for where you are, especially if you're in large metro areas. Or if you are somewhere much more remote, say the Dakotas, uh, this might not work as well, and you might have to lower that threshold down some. But let's take a look at making a little more regional map and adding the city names so that they're a little more recognizable. So I'm going to take the same code and modify the region. So now we'll look at where a lot of case studies happen, which is the Central Plains. And to keep our map aspect ratio nice, we'll stretch it a little bit more in X than we might think of the central plains. Let's look at northern Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, southern Missouri, southern Kansas. So you can see we have a, a few dots that plot on the map here. And if you're familiar with the area, you'll probably know what cities these are, but you might not be familiar with the area. And we have this information in the CSV file. We'll call axe.text, and we can use most of this from our scatter. X, Y, we need the text that we want. So that'll be our city, city ASCII name. And let's see what we get as a result of this. Well, it might not be exactly what you were expecting. There's our map, but look at all the city names. This is because we're plotting the text and it's not being clipped to the figure area. So we need to set clip on to be true. Now it's going to clip the text to be in the figure area. It's not perfect, but it's certainly much better. And if we want to space out, there are several ways we could uh, modify the position of the text. We could set horizontal and vertical alignment. Uh, I'm going to add a couple of spaces before the city name because I kind of like this upper right or northeast position, but I just want a little bit more space between the marker and the city name. And there we go. Now we have in just a few lines of Python and two minutes, if you don't have to listen to the full explanation every time, you major cities in your study area plotted with a freely available data file. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.